and he is currently working for ITCA Solutions. Now, before we start the session, I would like to notify you that we will have a live Q&A at the end of this session. So please write down any questions you will have in the chat box. Mr. Al-Nurani, we are so honored to have you today. The mic is all yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Abdurrahman. Uh, I'm really happy to have you guys today. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to give big thanks to everybody who is standing and organizing this session, which I believe is going to be uh, very useful for most of you guys. I really hope so. Okay, so uh, today um, I'm going uh, to go through directional drilling introduction. Uh, and I will, I will try uh, to make it. I mean, I, I'll, I'll try to uh, to go very quickly and cover all of the most important points so it can help you guys. Okay, our agenda will be uh, introduction to direct drilling. Really. I will go uh, through trajectory design, the terminology and basic, uh, basic terminology about well plan. We'll go through bottom hole assembly or BHA steerable motor and rotary steerable system with, uh, or, or RSS, okay? Directional drilling. Uh, let's start with uh, definition of directional drilling, uh, which is the science and art of debating a well bore along plan course from surface location to the, to the subsurface target, whose location is given a lateral distance and direction from the vertical. As is shown by a picture below. Uh, here we have the main common type of directional well profile. Actually, it's depend on geological objective and production mechanism of the well. Let's start from the top uh, left corner with the vertical, which is the conventional one, it's uh, the vertical section. Uh, we have J-type, and as we can see in J-type well, it's like it's combining of three parts, which is uh, if we if we look on the mouse, it's like it's combined with the stress section. We have here a build section and then tangent section. This one is uh, for J type. The third one is the S type, which is uh, combined of stress section. And then we have a build section here, tangent section, and another uh, drop section, or also we can say it's like vertical section. The last one is horizontal uh, directional wall profile, which is we start with the stress section. We have build section here, and then we have tangent section. We have the second build section, and then uh, whole section, the last one, which is the horizontal, horizontal line, okay? Uh, okay, here we have the directional well application. Uh, we, we try to cover most of uh, direction drilling application on this uh, picture. Let's start with the top left, right? Okay, the first application is the side tracking. Uh, I will just go quickly with side tracking. As we all know, if we if we have like kind of uh, difficulty or uh, during drilling, and we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't uh, continue drilling, and we have like uh, we got stuck. Okay, what we do? We go for pack off, and then we can just very easy side track the well and continue drilling. The second application is an inaccessible location, okay? In this picture, it's like, for example, a city. City is like, we have can consider it an accessible location. Another example, if you have mountain, we can put just uh, the rig on the top of mountain, so we can just, I mean, uh, put it in the distance. We can go directionally and hit the target. The third application is the salt tone drilling, as you can see in the picture here. Uh, the fourth one, fault control. We can also re-entry. We have multiple onshore to offshore. Actually, if we have the target and it's very close to onshore, it's like it's manner of cost saving. Actually, it's uh, it's better. It's like to to have onshoring and then drill to offshore, so we can save a lot of cost. Uh, we have also one of the application is relief well. If we have well on fire or blow out, 
we can't go on top of well and kill the well. So what we can, what we could do, we could just uh, drill another well directionally, repair the heavy metal or whatever to kill the well, and then go and uh, hit the well on fire and inject the mud and kill the well. Okay, we have horizontal application here. Uh, for example, on this picture, let's say uh, we have very thin layer. So one of the application is like we can just drill really horizontal well and we can go further. I mean, in the sea layer, one of the application, and we can have, I mean, uh, long distance inside the reservoir. We have uh, uh, next one is a multilateral or sometimes call it fish pond application. We have extended reach. And the last one is short, medium, long radius. Okay, in this part, we will move to and talk about uh, trajectory design and well planning terminology so it can help you guys to, to deal with. Uh, okay, definition the well design. So, what we mean by well design? Actually, the well blind is a uh, process used to put together the data that will be used to design a successful well to ensure that all aspects meet the specific objective of that well. Actually, it's a lot of effort need to be done at uh, pre chop planning. If you look at the uh, diagram here, we need to start data gathering and validation. We need to have casing design, trajectory design, survey program, drilling fluid, drilling system design, cementing design. Then at the end, we will have the complete well design. The survey, the information required to calculate the bottom hole positioning, uh, this definition of survey. And the survey actually is composed of three measurement. We need to have like the measure depth, borehole inclination, borehole azimuth, which need to be corrected to relevant nose, either uh, magnetic nose, a true nose, or a grid nose. So we need to have these three pieces to, to get the survey calculation done. Trajectory design terminology. So uh, to get better understanding on design, we need to be aware of this terminology. The first one is the surface location. So the surface location actually is the start of the well board. The coordinates of the surface location represent the, gra the graphical position, where is the well is starting. If you look at the picture here, so it's like very close, very clear. And then we have the kick off, uh, the kick off point, uh, which is uh, the point at given vertical depths below the surface location where the well is to be deviated away from the vertical. The third terminology is the well profile. Actually, the well profile is a plan trajectory of the well board from the surface location to the side, to the target. The profile is designed to minimize the public severity and the BHA torque and drop. Uh, the last one we have target area is a defined area as prescribed vertical depth and location, which will be intersected by the well board. Okay, in this part, uh, we are gonna talk about the bottom hole assembly or PHA. Here we have uh, some example for the bottom hole assembly, which is composed of uh, pit stabilizer, reamers, drill collars, subs used to, to the bottom of the drill string. Let's, uh, if you look at the example, the first one is like uh, combining of uh, pit and bit sub, drill collar, we have different, different type of page as shown on the picture below. Okay, uh, here uh, we have example of PHA. For example, if we need to, to have building PHA, which it has a welcome effect, okay? So the build rate actually, it depends on geology and inclination, and also depends on the, the polar diameter and drilling parameters. If you look at the, the picture on the right side, so uh, let's take example number three. It's used this as a slide to medium building assembly, depending on how much under gauge of middle stabilizer and the BHA weight. 
Okay, let's, uh, if you go one by one from one to nine, dot nine is the highest, is giving highest fielding response. Actually, it depends on uh, number of stabilizer, distance of stabilizer, either the stabilizer is uh, under gay or full gay. Here we have some examples from one to nine. To nine. Uh, another example for BHA, we have this, we call it the lock, lock up BHA. If we, if you are planning to hold inclination or M for zero net side force at the big, we can go for this one. I mean, as, uh, as per required plan. For example, you have BHA number one, actually the special holding BHA to achieve positive tendency. BHA number two, vary from positive to negative tendency. Local experience data for fine tuning the PHA. Okay. Uh, we have example of bandolium or dropping inclination. So if we are planning to uh, to drop the angle, so we have here uh, several examples starting from one to seven. So the seven is uh, maximum dropping PHA, which which actually is depends on the place of a stabilizer in bottom hole assembly. If you look at the number two, for example, it's like 30 to 60. So as far as we go from the bit, so it's giving, I mean, more drawing tendency. Okay. Okay, so we will move to uh, another point which uh, will affect the side force uh, is the OD, OD of the color. We have different example here for 14, three quarter, 12, one quarter, nine, seven, eight, and eight and a half uh, drill bit with different color OD. And as it's shown here, it's like uh, in 14, three quarter bit, we have uh, nine and a half color. The side force is eight, uh, 814 pound. And as more as we go, I mean, uh, less ID or more, is giving more flexible color, which is giving bigger the side force. Okay. Uh, there's another effect on the side force, which is a weight on bit. Increasing weight on bit uh, will induce a bit tilt which is it will increase the positive side force. We have several examples here. It's like uh, 20,000 20, pounds of weight on bit, giving 855 pounds side force. And as more as we go, we'll get more side force. Now we'll move to uh, the second point, which is the steerable motor. Steerable motor. Actually, there is uh, several use for steerable motor. Uh, in normal vertical walls, we are using uh, the motor as performance drilling in a stretch hole, which will increase ROB and reduce casting wear. In directional drilling application, the trajectory control geometrically and geologically using the steerable motor. We have the surface adjustable bent for various dog leg severity capacity, DLS. Okay. If we uh, look at the picture, this is the main component for the power part for a steerable motor. We start from the top, we have the top sub, and then we have the bore section, we have the transmission assembly, we have the surface adjustable bend housing, which we can adjust at the surface before we start deleting as, as we need. It's like as, as uh, per plan, we can, we can adjust the bend housing. Then we have the peeling section, and the last we have dry shaft. So if we uh, here we have like top top view uh, of a power section for a motor or power pack, we have like uh, stator and rotor. We have uh, we have it's like from the first one we have one lock. We have configuration three. We have configuration four, five, if one, two, three, four, and four, five, seven, eight. So, so 
So the first number, if we took uh, seven, eight as the example, the seven one is, uh, is the rotor, lobes, and eight representing stators. Okay, so uh, the more lobes, the more lobes actually meaning uh, lower uh, speed and high torque, and less lobes meaning like uh, higher uh, revolution and lower torque. Okay, now we'll move to a rotary steerable system or RSS. Why rotary steerable? Actually, uh, let me go quickly and just uh, to highlight some, some point uh, when we talk about motor and RSS. So for the motor to, uh, to control and to follow the plan, actually we are using, uh, we are sliding. I mean, we uh, sliding is like, we need to, to do, when, when, when we want to do some correction, it's like we have to stop uh, surface RBM and then we need to, uh, to point the pen to the desired direction and then start slide drilling with the motor. But in RSS technology, so we don't need to, to stop rotation. So we can just, I mean, send some command as we can see later and continue drilling. So uh, in rotary steel wood, it's, ca it's capable of controlling inclination only 2D rotary system. So as you can see, we, are, we have like high side and low side. We have no bend here. Why rotary steel wood? As I just mentioned, it's like the capable of controlling inclination azimuth only when it's sliding. This one is a steerable motor, as I just mentioned. But in RSS system, we can, we can control inclination and azimuth while rotation. Rotary steelable. Okay, rotary steelable capable of controlling inclination azimuths, wireless rotating, a 3D rotating system. Okay. Uh, the type of RSS or type of uh, rotary steelable system, actually, we have like uh, the direct side force and we have a bit tilt without side force. If we look here, it's like in the direct side force technology, it's like we have like uh, in slumber here, it's called like we have bats it's trying to pushing, to pushing again, again is the, the well wall, and then the bit is going to go in opposite direction. And the bit with outside force, we have this, it's like very clear. We have like kind of bending here. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, uh, when we do the directional control work with the motor, so we had to stop like service RPM and then start uh, sliding. So what is going to be the big challenges for steerable motor? Actually, the first big challenge will be the hole cleaning since we are not rotating. High torsionality, micro leg, trajectory control, because we will have like uh, issue of buckling and lock up. Inability to slide, especially in high, very high angle. Differential sticking while sliding, since we are not rotating. So uh, the most of uh, the audio of the color or, or drill string at some point will stick against the wall. And there is a big chance to have differential sticking while sliding. If you look at the picture below, so it's like uh, representing the main issues relating related to steerable motor. Maintaining orientation, low effective ROP, poor, poor hole cleaning, tilt up rate formation sensitive, high torsionality, buckling. Actually the buckling and lockup is, is like normally here in the, in the bottom side. Inability to slide due to the high friction force. It's like a lot of cutting will settle down the bottom part. We will have also differential sticking and it will be very, very difficult to slide with steer up the motor and there is no surface RPM. Here is like uh, representing some the part of rotor steerable system. Okay, so this is the bats. It's like uh, we call it bats. We let's move further. Here we have top view for rotor steerable system. Uh, on this side, if we are planning to go to right turn, for example, 
So we have three bats, as we can see with yellow color. So if you want to go to right side and then we send the command to the rotary steerable system. So the stationary control bar, if, if I will start to uh, deploy this part on this side, so our tool will go to the right side. And we have another example here, if we send the command to build, so the system will deploy the bottom parts and then start again, start to push again at the wall and, and go to the build side. Okay, so uh, we have some upgrade has been carried out later. It's like uh, they added a couple of measurement, which is optimized drilling. Okay, like uh, they add near bit measurement in real time. Inclination and azimuth from the bit, increased survey accuracy, azimuth and gamma ray, fully rotation design, optimized cutting flow, reaming and back reaming capability. So if we look at this picture, continuous survey on inclination azimuth show the superior directional control achieved by continuously rotating steerable system versus traditional assembly. So we have the top graph uh, when we are using motor and the bottom graph is, uh, is a power drive. So it's very obvious that if when you are using uh, RSS or rotary steerable system it's showing superior directional control. It smooth well, it's smooth. Measurement. Okay, uh, as we mentioned already, the power drive system improves ROV since we are keep rotating, which is optimized pit cutting structure, optimized drilling parameters, continuous drill string rotation, no reduction in ROV to slide, better hole cleaning, less wiper trips, which is mean higher overall ROV. So uh, this is the end of uh, the ferris part uh, is direction of drilling. Now we will go to uh, the MWD because uh, the direction of drilling segment in general we need to have like tools that is give us the survey, that is give us our location, okay? And we are using MWD, so I'm gonna go quickly through MWD. I will talk about what's MWD, what kind of measurement uh, is provide. I will talk about the system we are using, and I will talk about data flow from the downhole tool to the surface computer, okay? The MWD that stand for measurement while drilling, uh, what it does actually is taking downhole measurement while drilling. So while doing the directional drilling, we need like to make sure we are following the plan. We are very close to the plan to achieve uh, our objective, prescribed objective and hit the target. So we need to have continuous measurement while drilling. Actually we are using to MWD to do so. The measurement include inclination of the well power, including azimuth and annular pressure, annular temperature, town hall weight and bit, and we have other measurement. Uh, service system. What and why? Actually, we to have the measurement while directional drilling operation, we need to have like monitoring tools, which is a service, like the service system one of the monitoring tools, it's a group of components that can be moved quickly from rig to rig as needed. To collect and process the data about drilling parameter and formation being drilled. Uh, we need to have the service system we already talk about it. Another thing we need to have the sensors. So to collect the data from downhole, I mean to to take the measurement, we need to have systems, we need to have sensors, and we need to have uh, the component to process all these data, okay? So we need to have the component like sensor, as I mentioned, for surface data and downhole measurement. We need to have computer with the software to demodulate, decode, and process the data. We need to have peripherals, like connecting the system component like cables or whatever, 
whatever we need to connect all this uh, system together, we need to have them. Uh, I'm going to start one by one. Okay, well, I will start with the service sensor. Uh, actually, we need to have like a couple of uh, sensors. Of normally, we, we need to have them on the right side. So we need to have drop work to get the depth. We need to have a hook load sensor or clamp line tension meter. We need to have pump pressure sensor, pump stroke counter, rotary torque sensor, signal pressure transducer, MLWD for M measurement and logging while drilling data. So the most important is SPT or signal pressure transducer, which is receiving the measurement from uh, MLWD tools. Uh, MWD tools actually have, uh, we have like two types, main two types of MWD. We have retrievable, which we can, I mean, we need to prepare on the surface of rig floor. It's like sometimes call it color mounted. So we'll prepare, we clamp the color on rig floor. We will put MWD inside. So this, this is the first one, retrievable. We have irretrievable, which is integrated together the color and tool itself. And the last one we have like a tool can provide measurement while drilling and can provide logging while drilling, just in one color. We'll have two tools, actually the three main, retrievable, irretrievable, and MLWD. Okay, whenever we talk about MWD, we need to define very important element, which is telemetry. And the telemetry actually is the process of transmitting data from place to another. So the MWD actually is using the telemetry to transmit the data from downhole up to the surface. In case of the MWD signal transmission is from the downhole MWD tools to the surface computer. Telemetry steps, so we have like seven or six or seven steps, which is, uh, which are include the downhole measurement. Okay, I will go in more details because this one is very important part. Let's uh, start one by one. Okay, we have our tool is already down the hole. So, what is the steps to take the measurement to to uh, to know our current position and how the tool is like taking this measurement? The first thing the tool is taking measurement. The second it will convert this measurement and then we'll start generate the signal. Then the signal start traveling all the way to the surface. As the surface, the sensor will start to receive the signal and then the signal will has to be demodulated or decoded to, uh, to known value on the surface. Okay, we'll go one by one, the measurement MWD and LWD tools make real-time downhole measurement during drilling. This, is, this measurement allow for formation evaluator, will power positioning and steering well, as we mentioned. The first step, to make sure we are following the plan, we need to take the measurement as it's planned, okay? So what the tool it does, it's like the taking measurement, okay? which is uh, including the formation evaluation, well board positioning and steering, and all the information we need to use. Before sending the data up hole, so the MWD tool convert the binary, convert the measurement to binary data wall, okay? Then the MWD tool combine the wall into frames, sync worth and error checking information are also added to each Frame. We have this example, it's like four frames. So the tool is using like uh, the binary data, zero one. We have example here to, for annual temperature, which is combined of one zero, double one zero one zero in binary. So this uh, example for frame on the left side, okay. So the third step, the first one is like taking down wall measurement as we mentioned. The second one is uh, data conversion. So the third one is like signal generation. During the drilling, the mud is pumped down, as we all know. So the pump is, dumped, is, is pumped down inside the drill string through the MWD tools and out to the bit, and then travel all the way to the 
between the annulus and drill string. To send the data up hole, the MWD tool generates signal by creating pressure pulses in the map. Okay, so I will just uh, demonstrate this one. Okay, how how we speak with MWD normally? I mean, either in Schlumberger or most of the company. It's like what we do is like each time, each time we we we, we shut the pump off. MWD tool will under, it understand that it's we need measurement, regardless of we need it or not. So whenever the pump is off, the tool is taking measurement. And as soon as we bring the pump up, the tool start sending the measurement up home. Okay? So the tool is decoding the binary data within the signal and it's traveling all the way inside the drill string to the surface. We go to the force, the signal propagation, so as soon as uh, we start pumping, as we mentioned, so the signal is we start traveling inside the drill string, the signal pulses from MWD tool propagate back the mud column inside the drill pipe. Okay, guys, please pay attention on this one. So when we start pumping, we are pumping inside the drill string. And the MWD start sending the measurement on the same path, but in opposite direction. I mean, even the, the signal MWD starts sending the signal inside the drill string, but in opposite direction, up hole. Okay, the fifth, uh, after, M, M, after MWD starts sending the signal up hole, so we have the surface sensor. As, uh, as it's shown in the picture, either in the manifold or top of some pipe, whatever. Okay, so the sensor is start collecting the data coming from downhole. And then the signal is sent to the surface system computer where is the data is start to demodulate and decode it onto the surface. Signal demodulation actually is the last step. It's like the service computer receive binary data from the signal. The frame decoder extract the data word from each frame and the service system software uses the database to generate output. For example, logs and well board coordinates. Okay. We have another example here. So on the service computer, we are using binary and we are temperature one zero double one zero one zero, and then it's converted back to base 10. But we have very clear example here. Okay. Let's review the step one by one. As we mentioned, it's like the first one, how the MWD work. It's like the first one is taking down hole measurement. Number two is like the data conversion. Number three is the signal generation. Number four, the signal propagation. And, and as, we, as I mentioned, it's like, it's gonna be inside the drill string, traveling all the way up hole. Uh, number five is the surface sensor acquisition it will start receiving the signal from down hole. And number six is like the signal as we mentioned the signal demotivation okay uh, there is a very important point as i already mentioned it's like mwd uh, whenever we stop the pump the tool understand that we need to take measurement and whenever we throw the bump pack, it will start following all these steps, six steps. I mean, this is a whole process for MWD signal. Okay. Uh, let's move forward. We'll talk about the type of signal. So the drilling company using variety of type of signal to transmit the dead. The mud pressure pulses. We have like three main type of pulses, like negative pulses, positive pulses, and continuous, continuous wave. Sorry. Like for example, it's like Schlumberger is using continuous wave, and now in our, in my company, current company, Itcan, so the technology is using is using uh, positive pulse. Okay how the MWD tool generate the signal.
we have this uh, picture, it's like showing, we have our MWD here, it's like combining of stator play, and we have the rotor play, okay? And how, how the pressure wave signal is generated, it's like, if you look here at the rotor, so when we start pumping, so the MWD is like this rotor starts moving. Sometimes it's like in closed position, position and sometimes it's go for open position. So we have this graph here representing the, we, when it's closed, so the pressure is, pressure is shooting up and what is open, so the pressure is going down. So this is our signal shape, it's gonna be like this. And here, as we can see, it's like we have very low amplitude of the signal. In another example, pressure wave signal is strong. So why the signal is strong here? Let's go back to the previous example. So we have the gap. Actually, it's very important factor when we are preparing the MWD for certain job. So we need to take in account the gap between rotor and stator, which is responsible for generating signal. Okay, on this example, we have 0.25, large gap. That's why we have very low uh, signal here. It's like amplitude. If you look at the amplitude of signal here, between closed and open position, it's like very, very, very weak signal. In the second example, instead of 0.2, we have 0 0.06, small gap. And if we look at the graph, we have very, very strong signal, which is showing large amplitude. Okay, uh, we already took two examples. When we have very, uh, when we have large gap and we, when, when we have small gap. The question is, which factor affecting this gap? Actually here we have the factor to be considered when setting the gap. So the first one, we need to take in account how much the plant flow rate is gonna be. We need to take the flow rate in account because it's causing erosion. We need to take in account also the pressure drop. The second factor we need to take in account is loss circulation material. As we know, it's like we have different specs of loss circulation material. So we need to, to, to take in account if there is a, if there is a planning to use the LCM. So because it's maybe cause jamming or region depends on the type of uh, any specs of LCM. Uh, the third factor we need to take in account the depth because the energy of signal as deep as we go we need to have a small gap to to get the large amplitude of the signal. Mat type also we need to take the mat type because it's affecting the signal as well and the last thing we need to take in account the mass solid because it's take erosion. If you look at the picture here, for example, uh, the gap too small for the flow rate. We have like very high flow rate. This one can cause excessive erosion and strong. Yeah, for sure we will have strong signal, but then we'll have trouble because we may have excessive erosion. And in this example here, it's like the correct gap size for the flow rate. Less erosion and strong signal. Okay. Gap is too small slot for a flow rate. Here we, we will have very weak signal and may we will not be able to detect by surface sensor. Okay? We need to focus on this point. So this so this is the main factor we need to include in pre job planning process. We need we need to know about all this. So because it's the most important. Okay, uh, I'll move to uh, signal problems and solution. Okay, uh, we have like low signal strengths due to depth of the well, high mass viscosity, flow rate, mass condition, signal prevalency, vibe ID, radiation losses. Actually, nothing can be done if we have this uh, signal problem. Nothing can be done except, as I mentioned before, 
during pre-job planning, we need to get, uh, we need to prepare, I mean, all the data we need to planning process, so to have better configuration for this cap, to choose the correct tools, okay? Uh, second one, sometimes let's say it's like we have the correct cap and then we start drilling and then we have this noise. So this is one of the problems that we may face during drilling. Actually noise like coming from different sources. We will take the first one. Sometimes uh, we receive noise from mud pumps. What is the solution? The solution, the bump stroke adjustment. Because as we can see here, it's like this, the two red lines Actually, this is our bandwidth for our program frequency, okay? So the bomb noise on this graph is showing on horizontal lines. If you can see, it's like these four horizontal lines shown here, the bomb noise. So if, this, if one of these uh, frequency fell inside our bandwidth, so we need to do some correction. What we could do, we could just adjust the bump stroke. And also we can uh, chart and make sure that the ball station down mirror is, is, is well charred. And also we can use filtering. Okay, another source of noise is the downhaul equipment. So if our, if our range of due modulation is like at low frequency, and we had this kind of uh, downhaul from, I mean, from motor or from downhaul BHA. So actually it's like failing at low frequency. So as, it, as it's shown here, also it's horizontal line. So rotary noise, what we could do, we can just play with parameter. We need to, we need to minimize this uh, noise. We can just play flow rate, we can play with the weight on beat can control RPM or may, may, may need to change the downhaul motor or P. Okay. The third one, uh, the noise from electrical equipment. What we could do about this one? Sensor cables, we need to make sure that the sensor cable is away from power cables. And our ejection books also, we need to keep it away from moisture. We need to make sure there is no loose connection and we need to have very good grounding. So the graph here is showing electrical noise at the vertical lines. Okay, we have another kind of uh, signal problem. Actually, this one is signal distortion due to the chain in cross-sectional area along the circulation system. As is shown by graph, it's like if we have sudden change in, or if we have change in ID inside the emitter of uh, at any place on the, on the drill string. What, what, what is happening? Let's focus on this picture at the bottom. So we have some kind of reflection. So this one is also affecting our signal coming from MWD. What we could do about this one? As we mentioned earlier, we need to include this one in good planning. We can use adaptive equalizer receiver, or we can move the carrier frequency, moving SPT, our sensors, signal pressure transducer sensor. So we can sometimes, we can change the place of uh, sensor, or we can just use additional or additive filtering. Okay, data encoding. MWD encodes the binary data within the wave of the signal. The MWD tool encodes the binary zeros and ones within the wave by shifting either the frequency or the phase of the wave. Okay. Here we have uh, the graph showing this one wave frequency. So the frequency of the signal is the number of waves that is passed at a given point in one second and it's expressed as hertz. 
So one wavelength represents one complete cycle. We have this example here. It's like in one second, we have 12 complete cycles. So here we could tell that, okay, the frequency is 12 hertz. Frequency shifting. So the MWD tools encode the binary data within the wave by shifting the wave frequency. So it shifts the frequency. So modulator in the MWD tool rotate at different speed. So frequency shifting involves increasing or decreasing the number of cycles per second. So here it's like showing how 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 you could uh, shift the frequency. Okay, we have here one complete cycle. We have here. Okay, and this. So how the MWD does that? So our rotor is like it start rotating at different speed. Okay, here we have minimum shift screen, MSK. So it uses a frequency shift to encode the symbol representing binary zero or one. One frequency encode the binary zero and another frequency encode binary one. So if you have this frequency, which is 0.375 Hertz, for example, it's calling zero and this one, calling binary one and back to the same one, calling zero. So here it's like showing another one in the table. Wave phase. Each wavelength can be related to the circle of 360. So wavelengths can be divided into the phases. So we have one full wave, this uh, example, 0, 90, 80, 270, 360. So how the tool is doing phase shifting? So the MWD tool encodes the binary data within the wave by shifting the phase of the wave. How we could do that? As we mentioned, it's like the rotor of the MWD or the modulator of MWD is not like changing rotation speed to, to phase shifting. It's like slow and then immediately the speed pack up to resume the same wave frequency. This causes the phase of the wave to shift in time. Here we have uh, like uh, this example. As we can see here, at this area here, we have a delayed slow down. That's why we have like bigger, uh, bigger distance on this one. This way. Okay. Phase shift detection. Like one time period example, let's say 55 millisecond or some tools, is compared to the previous time period to determine if there has been phase shift. The demodulation software in the service computer specifically compares the last part of the period to identify the phase shift. We have in the graph, it's like it's very clear in the graph on the bottom, comparing with A and B. A and B are in phase, as, as we can see in the picture here. And then when we are comparing uh, C to B, it's very clear that it's 180 out of phase, okay? So we have this quadrature phase shift king. This one is, is, is like quite similar, but this one here is using like 0, 90, 180, 270 phase shift to encode one of four symbols. Each symbol represents two binary digits. So this is another one. We have, as is shown by graph here, we have it in the table. Okay. No phase shift between B and C, and here no phase shift between B and C, and here also no phase shift between B and C. So then the value of symbol is going to be zero, zero. This house is encoding two binary digits. The 
uh, move further. It's called reminding. Okay. Zero one. 90 phase shift between 90 phase shift between A and B. We have 180, it means one one, which is mean 180 phase shift between A and B. And the last one is 270, one zero. So one zero, 270 degree phase shift between A and B. Okay, uh, let's go back and refresh. I refresh the step. That's how MWD taking measurement. It's like six or seven steps. As we mentioned, downhole measurement, data conversion, signal generation, signal propagation, surface sensor acquisition, and signal demodulation demodulation and decoding. Actually, all this process will be carried out on the surface, on the surface system. Okay, here, we go to uh, just read this one, frame decoding. So we have binary digits encoded within the pressure wave. This how how actually is our signal, how it's come from down board. Then it's received in service computer the service computer will recover the stream of binary digits. Then we have the frame decoder start to decode all the measurement coming from downhole, okay, and giving us our walls. And all this job will be carried out on the surface of the, on the surface system. So here we have like example, this, uh, this is a screen we normally have on, uh, on the service computer. So we call this uh, frames for this one. It's like we have this frame, it's like containing some measurement like gamma, like the measurement from accelerometer, measurement from magnetometer and different measurement. Okay, and as we can see here, it's like the binary data is coming. It's, uh, Breathing over, it's like one big one, 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 okay. And as you can see on the top of this page, it's like uh, T modulation. So this is how is T modulation is done on the surface, uh, how is monitor and how is done on the service computer. Okay. Survey frame sample. We have this this one actually here if you can see the mouse so this one is a survey frame this is how the z1 the binary data is coming and, and this is how it's decoded and demodulated here it's like this uh, example of a survey frame we have as, uh, as you can see we have g sgx sgy and sgz actually this is the, the measurement from accelerometer in three axes x y and z we have hz we have uh, HY and we have HZ. This uh, measurement of magnetometer in three axes. So once we receive this frame, so the software okay will tell us okay you have this at this point the depth is for example uh, we have it from the, the depth sensor and we get like inclination we will get azimuth so we can. Uh, the software can calculate the rest of the world coordinates depending on this survey measurement. Okay, as we just mentioned, this is our uh, survey frame. This uh, MWD end of uh, MWD millimeter. 